a lesson and discussion on this work, follow the lesson for free and just pick up all the tips from the video. But if you're interested, I do have a sheet music edition of all 25 etudes in Carcassi's Opus 60, and there's a link for that in the description. Etude uh, number 21 um, gives a very good opportunity to work on grace note slurs, ascending and descending slurs, um, hammer-ons and pull-offs in guitar lingo, but all in the context of these little grace note ornaments. The the challenging thing for me, because I can I could kind of play this piece right, right off the bat, the challenging thing is getting a consistent sound from those ornaments, from those from those grace notes. Um, sometimes the slur is super clean, sometimes it's a little bit sloppy. Um, having a consistent sounding slur is probably the most challenging thing. Plus, um, keeping your left hand kind of light and executing that light um, little slur and then jumping into a chord shape afterwards and then jumping out. Um, so keeping that light and crisp and then jumping into chords and then jumping out is a really kind of like an on-off um, tension release exercise in the left hand as well. Also in terms of accuracy, there's lots of shapes that you have to accomplish while also going through all these different um, combinations of fingers. And like I said, because the, the grace notes, uh, they occur on different fingers, um, getting a consistent sound is a real challenge. That's something definitely um, that I want to continue working on in the piece is just really going through and evening out the sound of the slurs themselves and then getting um, more and more accurate with the, with the shifts into the, into the chords. So I think one of the first things you can do in this piece is just take those grace notes slurs on their own and practice them just on their own without the rest of the piece. I would actually add the note before though. And just practice each one kind of on a little loop, but making sure you can get a consistent sound on each time you do it. And it's actually quite difficult for me. I'm like, it's most of the time it's somewhat consistent, but then, you know, occasionally something will sound a little bit different. Those are sounding fairly consistent. Let's try the next one. You can see that that combination of 2-4, I'm not quite as crisp all the time, it's not always sounding exactly the same. see if you just go through all of them in the whole piece you're gonna have a really great little technical exercise to work on and because you're thinking of of the piece in a musical context not just as an exercise you can put a real focus on the consistency of the sound of of those of those slurs a couple of other things about the piece before we do a walkthrough um i think that you can you can make the choice of of how you finger it you can follow the fingering on the page uh, on my edition, of course. Um, sometimes I play certain things open instead of closing them all the time. So I play that open, but then I slur the, the E closed. I don't consider the ornament kind of like as part of the same melody, so I'm okay with mixing and matching that way. And sometimes I do it just for relief, like getting out of a chord, playing something, setting up, and then playing. However, feel free to close those as well. Um, that could sound very good. Uh, sorry, that didn't sound very good. I think some people will um, prefer to actually just close the note before always. You might find it helps with your slur. I didn't do it all the time in this in this piece. Sometimes I utilize the open string when possible. So feel free to, to check that out. Now in terms of articulation, I do a slight lift on the second beat. If I was to exaggerate that, which I wouldn't want to do in performance, but if I were to exaggerate that,
it's it's kind of up to you what you how you articulate it. Some of the chord changes later might actually require a tiny amount of lift because you have to shift afterwards so that articulation goes well with the technique with the technique. So you can kind of fuse your musicality and your technique together in that regard. I just wouldn't go overboard with it. You know, just a little bit of a of a lift on that second beat. To keep it bouncing along. You want to focus on the upper line in this piece. There's, there's some times when the bass voice takes over as well, but um, I think that's your primary task. So I think we can just do a walkthrough of the piece. I think that gives you a lot of ideas. There's overall musicality and dynamics in, in terms of the phrasing, so you want to work on that as well, just like instead of thinking of each individual group as the main point of the piece. You don't want to do that because that's all the piece does the whole time. You do want to stream through larger sections of the piece and then close them off. Um, add a, a touch of rubato here and there just in terms of phrasing, not, not rubato necessarily, but like just um, relaxation of the push forward uh, to get a good sense of overall phrasing so you don't get hung up on doing da 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 da, da, da over and over and over for the whole piece, even though that's kind of what's happening. You do want a sense of musical um, direction in the piece. So let's do a walkthrough of, of it now, and we'll just point out a couple of things. I won't have too much to say, but let's see what we can come up with. I'll go a little bit slower. phrase there, to relax, then start again. Relax, and then the bass takes over. Measure 33 there after you do the ornament. Do the bar right away. That way you can just release your fingers off and the bar's already there. Then some funny fingerings there, but it's all about keeping the uh, other fingers free to grab the next chord. Uh, that's why we're doing that. We use two here. That way three, four, one can grab the next chord. Then we slide that down. Then we have to jump. There's no avoiding that. Relax. And now, probably the trickiest section. Make sure you play a C natural there. Um, I, it's really easy just to think 2-4 and play a, play a C sharp. we have it in much closer proximity, right? Again, I think that in this series of, of measures here, it's particularly difficult to keep that light, accurate feel in the left hand while also like constantly shifting and jumping. So it's a real exercise in left hand control, right? I'm just going to say slow. It's definitely challenging. I really 
before we start again and play to the finet. So challenging little section there, but it, it's all in the co same context of the whole piece. It just happens in closer proximity there. So all the things that you work on in terms of keeping those slurs crisp and clean and the left hand relaxed and accurate for grabbing the chord shapes and all that tension and release, suddenly it just happens in closer proximity at the end there, making it more challenging. This is a great piece to a really work on clean technique in the context of the musicality. Um, I know that's what all etudes do, but in this particular piece, I think there's um, quite a bit to work on in terms of your left hand, and it really exposes um, you know, deficiencies in, in the left hand in that regard. For myself personally, it's the, um, it's the release after those chords into like a perfect hand position to play a really nice clean slur afterwards. That's challenging for me to get the, to not hold on to a little bit of tension in my left hand and then play a sloppy slur. And even in my recording there, a couple of, a couple of the slurs, I, I, you know, I wish I could take them back, but I can't always do that. Um, so continuing to just focus on release, hand setup, clean slur, next chord, you know, making it very orderly, but also, you know, musical across the measures. Really challenging, a wonderful etude to work on these things. I'm gonna continue working on them. Um, I This is one of the etudes that I'll, I think I'm gonna keep around and, and practice regularly because it's just, there's so many good things to work on in my left hand. It's also a great reminder because if you don't play something like this for a while, your left hand can start forgetting about this requirement of like on, off, tension, release, um, clean and this cleanliness. This is a great etude to practice to always keep that left hand reminded of that and to continue focusing on it. <laughs> 